Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be a match from DreamHack Masters Winter. Bottom left, gonna be Maru. Top right, gonna be Showtime here on 2000 Atmospheres. Gonna be excellent. I wanna see how Showtime stacks up against Maru. He's been leveling up this year, so I wanna see if he can give Maru a close game or maybe beat him. I don't think he's on Maru's level yet, but anything can happen in a game where two players are fairly evenly matched, right? Check in for proxies. Or maybe... Throwing up a proxy? Yeah. Okay, so he's just going to try to fake out Showtime that it's going to be a proxy. This probe is going to be tricked, you guys. Doo -doo. Yeah, I mean, we see this sometimes, right? Just throw up a barracks here, or kind of in the back side of the natural base, just out of range of the scouting probe normally. And so the probe comes in and says, Ah, I must prepare. Must prepare for a proxy, and then it changes their build, and nope, it's just a regular macro opening from Morrow. It's just, uh, the barracks is somewhere else. So yeah, Showtime's like, huh, well... Playing against Maru is abjectly terrifying, so this is not good for me. So look, he's checking. Yeah, look, he's looking over here for the barracks. Can't see it. Not finding it there. And he knows. He knows about this trick. So he's looking on the left side of the third base. Doesn't see it there. Is he going to... He might just jink around. I mean, he did go Gateway Cybercore Nexus. No, does he... Oh, and he came back in. So he sees the barracks or factory there and says, okay, so there's got to be a barracks somewhere as well. Is he going to check it out here? Oh my gosh. Oh, he just he just catches sight of the Reaper. Okay, so that's nice. So he scouts the Reaper and he tries to see where the barracks is, but it's basically there. Anyway. Oh, throwing up a bunk. I like this from Maru. So this Reaper's name is Conker the Squirrel. After another night of hard drinking, the conk at the cock and plucker. Plucker? Is that what it's supposed to be? Is that a typo? Conker passes out on the wrong side of town and finds himself donning a reaper suit when he awakes. He's got a feeling that this is going to be a real bad fur day. <laughs> He's inside the bunker. The SCV's in there, too. This is really more annoying than anything else. Like, I don't see this actually slowing Showtime down that much or even, honestly, killing anything. But, wow, he's turned up a shield battery. Uh, they All right. I mean, do you not? It's just a Reaper, man. I know he's inside a bunker. But, like, at least force the SCV to come out and repair a little bit. There we go. Just forcing the SCV to come out and repair a little bit. Maybe get a shot off on that SCV with the Adept. Ah, Adept is hiding. Adept is jumping back in and out of the bunker here. And now the Adept's close enough to where the SCV can't come out with the Adept killing it. Which means everybody has to get on out. And the... Oh, the SCV actually escaped. And the salvage... Man, Salvage comes in there too. Well done. All right, man. So I think Showtime's in a pretty good spot, right? Morrow's second base at his natural is pretty uh, not done yet. Not even halfway complete. Showtime's is done. Worker count is 31 to 26. And yes, Terrans have mules. Ugh. Conquer the squirrel was right. It was a bad fur day. But I think he scouted the Stargate. Oh, he did scout the Stargate. So it's going to be Phoenix, which are actually a pretty great answer to Widowmine drops, which it looks like what Morrow is going for here. He's got the Widowmines. He's got the Medivac. He's going to move out here, but Widow Mines can just lift and kill your Widow... Or, uh, Phoenix can lift and kill your Widow Mines pretty darn effectively. Was making a Viking and then canceled that. You know, interesting. Maybe he's going to keep the uh, Widow Mines at home and try to catch the... Yeah, try to catch the incoming Oracle here. So, Phoenix absorb... Okay, so here's the good thing. Phoenix can absorb a Widow Mine hit. Where oracles can't. So I think that's what that was. He was basically like, okay, you do have Widow Mines. I did take a hit to my Phoenix, but it's not dead. And so that's great. I'm going to take a third base at the same time. I really feel like Showtime is in the lead right now. He's doing fantastic. He's up 41 to 29 workers. He's going to start a third base here right about now. There we go. So, hmm. So again, you need a little bit more economy. A few more workers to keep up with the mules that the Terran is going to have here in this uh, uh, in this matchup. But if you look at the income tab, yeah, it's favoring Showtime pretty heavily right now. And he is making another oracle? Yeah, he's got two oracles out. 
I mean, I know they're really used for revelation in the mid to the late game against Terran, but two oracles indicates we're trying to be aggressive with this, or maybe just throwing down a lot of stasis fields, which even the best Terran players can kind of blunder into. This is interesting. He knows there's Widow Mines out, so he knows at least to be very careful with it. How many Widow Mines are there? There's three. So one, two, and the third one was down here. Oh, they're moving out. Oh, this is not good timing. This is not good timing to be moving out, Maru. These Oracles are... They're going in. By that, I mean they're not going in. Dude, Showtime, you gotta go. You got... There's a window here where there's no defense at all. He doesn't know that, though. So he's going to be very careful with this, but oh, this is so brutal. The Oracle getting in absolutely going to town on these SCVs. A bunch of them are dying. Another SCV goes down, and the Stasis catches the Cyclones. Oh, the Cyclones are such a big part of this advance for Maru. Shield batteries coming up now. Attacking into shield batteries. Oh, the force field. The, oh, picking off Widow Mines there. Are we still... Dude, this Oracle, though... This Oracle's got seven kills. Ten kill, ten SCVs have gone down. Oh, see, the Cyclones, like I said, are a big part of this, but Shield Battery Overcharge is kind of rendering a lot of these units functionally immortal right now. Cyclones just trying to kill what they can. Widow Mind fires. Ah, oh, Sentry does go down. This is some nice aggression out of Maru. Shield Batteries are low and pretty low on the energy there, and this tank has not killed much, but it has done a lot of damage otherwise. Also, Liberator showed up in the main base and got eight probe kills. So he definitely got revenge for all the death of his SCVs and then some. He's killed more probes than SCVs have died so far in the game. That said, it is 49 to 37 workers. Showtime has three bases. Maru has two. So, so far, so good from Showtime. I think he's had a game plan. He's executed it fairly effectively. His Oracle's got a lot of damage done. The one thing that keeps Maru in this game, well, two things. One is that it's Maru. The second thing is that uh, I ended up losing 11 probes to that Liberator. So that can't happen. But the Oracles, both did they both survive? Yeah, four kills and seven kills. Uh, one of them made it out. I didn't realize he had done that. Way to go. Or way to go, female Oracle, because they are the females. I guess I could name them. As long as we have a second here. So this Oracle's name is Squanchy. Squanchy's a flying orb filled with teleportation fluid. Which it uses to send enemy workers to a uh, land of eternal happiness and endless minerals called Froopy Land. <laughs> Rick and Morty reference right there. A fairly obscure one, too. Like, that's not... Squanchy and Froopy Land are not exactly uh, well-known Rick and Morty things. Dude, Froopy Land is one of... I mean, look, there's a billion things. There's a lot of things in Rick and Morty that are just like... Wow, they went there. <laughs> but, uh, Fruity Land is one. Production tab coming back. I actually watched a, um, a TV Sins video about the Keep Summer Safe episode, where Summer's in the spaceship in a parking lot. And the TV Sins dude called it a weak B plot. And I was just like, how dare you? The Keep Summer Safe plot is better than the, well, I mean, I don't know. The A plot of that episode is the one where Rick has set up, uh, uh, basically, uh, civilization to manually power the battery for his car. That's that's really good too, though. That's a really good part of the episode as well. We don't mind. Does kill Oracle. Goodbye, Squanchy. But Squanchy's friend is still alive. But just both. I think the A plot and the B plot of that episode are both fantastic. I really do. Sneak. Oh, look at them sneaking through. Oh. Do they know? I guess the Raven's here. Maybe they could see it. Ah! Coming in. The Phoenix are here to kill your medevacs. And we're going to warp in some stalkers. And I don't know about this. He's committing, though. So, like, Maru's absolutely got a nice setup here. The Phoenix have to get out. No! Like, three of them go down. Zealots are charging in kind of two or three at a time, which is not what you want to see. But then as they start getting a whole flank up here, everybody dies. And not everyone can be saved because there's too many... Stalkers around. Another smaller attack here at the front. Going to try to take down a warp gate at the very least here. And yes, they're going to get it. They're going to get a warp gate. More reinforcements cruising across here from Maru. Loving that. Picking up the Widow Mines of the Phoenix. That is what we were talking about earlier. And finally, it happens for Showtime. He does manage to make the Widow Mines less effective than they would like to be. Pick them up. Save them. Oh, could only save a Marine and a Marauder there. And they're both very injured, but that's okay. They can be healed. Showtime needs a fourth base, because Maru's got a third right now, and the income is back down into Maru's favor. 
and that's going to stay there thanks to the mules being on even base count, but it is 65 to 60 workers, so time is a minor lead there. A lot of charge lots, which are very good against Terran and very frustrating for them to play against, especially if they have an armor upgrade, which they do. They've got one armor upgrade. Colossus coming in, but there are Vikings in this comp right here, and by that I mean there are two. We can see them. They're here to escort the Raven, I guess. Ooh, where are we going with this? And yeah, Showtime kind of thinking about expanding up this way, but also Maru poking that direction too. Uh, maybe a ninja expand in this location would be pretty good. Nah, he's going to expand down here in the low ground for his fourth. Okay. I think that's all right. But look, we're getting the enhanced shockwave, which if you're a Terran player and your game goes past, you know, the 11 or 12 minute mark against the Protoss these days, you probably want to get enhanced shockwaves. The EMP really helps you in this matchup. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, can he save this fourth base? I don't know. Charge Lot's charging in. Colossus are not part of the party yet. They don't have extended thermal lens. They're doing their best with their minimum range here, though. Archon's trying to get that bonus damage versus biological in on the mix, but... Not quite able to do it. The kiting is good for Maru, but Showtime's okay with the kiting because it means that Maru is leaving. At least he is leaving temporarily. So he does save the fourth base, which is humongous. He's also getting disruptors, which can be very useful against a Terran Bio Ball. Uh, just a couple of big hits can really make a difference here. 146, 154 to 145 supply in favor of Showtime. Income tab is fairly close, which, hmm, whose units are more cost efficient in this matchup? I'd say... I'd say it's pretty close. Like, I think the Protoss expensive units are really cost efficient. Colossus, Disruptors, Archons can all do a lot of damage for their cost. But also, Marines and Marauders are just incredibly cost efficient, fairly cheap units. So, it's hard to say. Oh, ooh, picks up that ghost. Man, that sick micro. That sick micro from Maru. Just insane. Going for a Dark Shrine showtime here. Got his fourth base up and running, and he's just been continuing with this probe production. He's doing very, very well. And again, he's been playing against Clem a lot, and Clem's a very scary Terran player. Clem is not on Maru's level, but practicing against Clem is going to help you in this matchup in general. Right? So, Maru taking a fourth base down here at the 6 o'clock position. Showtime's fifth base probably needs to happen. Maybe a fifth and a sixth once he starts getting maxed out, and he starts getting a bank. But... Widow Mine drops. The 12 minute Widow Mine drops that nobody ever expects. I think. Pretty sure that's what happens. Army heading up to join them. That's why there's a pile on here, is for vision purposes, and also why that Oracle was holding the Zelnaga Watchtower as well as it could without being a ground unit. So we can see this army coming. And kinda. Whoa, oh, excuse me. It's a little post-nasally drippy, which usually means I'm getting sick, which is just like... I feel like I just got over getting sick. And my leg's a lot better now, and I don't know, I'm feeling healthy. And then this happened. Go figure, can't catch a break right now. Fleet Beacon, DT Blink, and a Stargate coming in here from Showtime. Very interesting. He's... No, he can't think about going carriers. I mean, I know Harstum... Had some success versus Mara with carriers last year, and it was one of the more amazing things of all time. But all right, Colossus are here. There are two of them instead of the traditional three. Disruptors do bad damage versus buildings, and I think that's a canceled command center. That's probably not something you can save. Y'all, that ghost gets an EMP off and escapes back to the safety. Mara coming back around, though. Gotta keep babysit those medevacs, man. And I think Mara's gonna try to spring a trap here. Oh, he does. Command Center finishes and lifts. EMP getting tossed down. Left side attack. Disruptor hits. Pretty good Disruptor hit there. I mean, not super game winning or anything, but not bad. Great splits for Morrow that time. And he gets a Disruptor, which is a little bit slow to get out of there. And forces a recall, too. I don't think that was necessary, but when Morrow's chasing you down, you don't know if he's going to stop or if he's going to keep coming. And you just got to be really, really careful with it. Advanced Ballistics coming in here from Showtime. And now, at the maxed out, he's going to expand to a 5th base. Probably a 6th base up here, but that Widow Mine is going to have something to say about that. Doesn't have any kills yet. We'll see if Showtime is going to try to expand up there with just a probe. Which generally, uh, not going to work out particularly well. But look at this, 5th base from Maru coming up to the left side. It is injured, but can be repaired. 
And it is carriers. Look at this. Showtime's going for a hybrid carrier play here. I like it. I'm on board. More Liberators coming in here from Maru. Liberators, pretty good against carrier interceptors. Not good against the carrier bodies themselves. And traditionally, you don't want to hit the interceptors when you're fighting carriers. But you know, sometimes it can be pretty good if you're just wiping out all the interceptors in a carrier fleet. And then they're just floating husks, you know? Anyway, three command centers at a time on the way for Maru. He's just got barracks galore back home. <laughs> I mean, look at this production. You just you have to be constantly building these throughout the game. Colossus getting some nice hits off here. Archon in the front doing some work. More EMPs happening. Ah, but he does snipe down one of the Colossus. There's two more, and there's carriers here. So now we're making four Vikings at a time to deal with the Colossus and the carriers. Ghost died for that EMP. Zealot comes back with zero kills. How dare you come back home with zero kills? You are a shame to all Protoss for not having any kills, man. Showtime making some more carriers. So yeah, hybrid play. It's Colossus, Stalker, Zealot. He needs to be able to deal with Marines is the thing. Because just mass Marine will obliterate a carrier ball if it's just a carrier ball. So what you need is something to kind of keep them away. Disruptors can do that. Colossus can do that. Charge Lots can do that. Disruptor takes down a Widow Mine. That's a free unit for a not free unit. Good trade. Also, ah, oh, the DT blink on top of the planetary. Big plays. Big plays there from Showtime. Oh, man. Gets 11 SCVs, snipes a planetary fortress, and gets out with a handful, four of the dudes. Liberators doing their liberating things, but, you know, the carriers don't care all that much about your liberators, Maru. Especially when they're in defender mode, nobody cares about them. Oh, Showtime expanding bottom right. Interesting. He's going to split the map that way, huh? Guess he really doesn't want to deal with this Widow Mine, I suppose. DT's joining back up with the bulk of the army here. Carriers have... Oh, that's a, that's a dead stalker. Is there no detection with this army? How are you... He's just using disruptors to clear widow mines now. He doesn't care about detection. I guess. He I mean, he doesn't have any observers out on the field at all, nor is he building any, so. Sure, he's not worried about widow mines, interestingly enough. Yeah, this is turning into a pretty crazy PVT. I'm really impressed with the showtime's been able to do here. Disruptor kind of wandering to the front, but maybe he needs that to try to take down a siege tank, but no. That does not work. More DTs in production here 2000 atmospheres is a good map for macro games there's a lot of places to expand a lot of them are very far away so it's pretty gutsy to expand out there but also fairly gutsy to move an army out to attack an expansion that is far from home carrier down viking from distance sniping it I'm just going man he knows there's liberators here he doesn't care but maybe he should because there's a lot of marines and marauders here too ah and a oof. Is that DT? Was that a DT attack? I think that might have been a DT attack. Yeah, sometimes when there's Liberators, you just gotta go, but if they're also being supported by, like, a, a bunch of Marines and Marauders, your Stalkers are not gonna have a good time with that. He just scanned this. He just scanned this. He knows it's here. Ah, finally took down the Widow Mine up in that location. And, yeah, so having just discovered this bottom right location... Coming in, six zealots warping in to try to deal with it. They have plus three attack and plus three armor. And there's a couple cannons and a shield battery to fall back here too, but I don't think it's enough. He's going to warp in a round of stalkers to try to do this, but I don't know about that either, man. Shield battery overcharge is up. Oh, he recalls in, and the Colossus managed to save the day there. Recall. Good spell. Uh, Terran Enzer hate it. Great EMP. Just a fantastic EMP catching the bulk of these stalkers. Showtime expanding up to where Widowmine's been, or was, for like 10 minutes in this game. So this is, I don't know. Income is favoring Maru more and more over the last minute or so, but it's largely been favoring Showtime for the last 10 minutes or so. Income, Maru has a bit of a bank. Showtime does not. Showtime is trying to make a few more probes here. He's got 79, but needs a few more, he feels like. Stalker's getting a couple hits off. Nice EMP, man. These ghosts are just... They're a little tanky, man. A little tanky. Mm. 
just this is not breakable. This is an impregnable defense here by Maru, and that's why Showtime needs this space. He's going to need to be, I think he's going to have to be more cost efficient than he is. I don't know that this carrier group is doing what he needs it to do. And he hasn't replaced any that have died either. He only has one and he's lost three, so he's like, yeah, we're good. Man, Liberators are just, they're just zoning out tools, aren't they? Ah, Disruptors catch at least two ghosts there, maybe three. Not too shabby. Building armor on the way for Morrow, because why not at the stage? Plus three air weapons. Getting started by Showtime here, which I remember how I was like, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get, uh, oh, that warp prism is dead. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to make any more air units today, but getting plus three air weapons indicates maybe we want it. Did you just cancel that? No, he let it finish. Okay. That's a dead planetary, but it's not a base. It's just a planetary that's kind of at the front here. Maru is playing a turtle strategy to a certain extent anyway. Man, Showtime tried to sneak that Warpism in there. There's a nuke on the way. From Maru. It's been a good week for nukes, y'all. We had a great 4v4 last week that featured nukes really heavily. We had a 1v1 at the Masters level that featured nukes as well. Now we're getting nukes from Maru. That's crazy. Although, Maru has recently been known to get a nuke. And then never find a use for the nuke. Which is always a disappointing reality. Alright, so how's Showtime doing here? Well, can you take this base? That'd be a gutsy base to take here. Top left might be pretty difficult too. Once again, Showtime just poking in. Pokes in, kills some stuff, pokes out again. He's not committing his whole army into this meat grinder. And yeah, he's going to try to expand up this way, which, you know what? If Maru's not interested in moving out, then just treat him like he's a mecking Terran playing against a Zerg player and expand everywhere. DT Stalker. They do take down the planetary at the 6 o'clock base, though. Six SCVs go down, but we're just going to lift another orbital over here to replace it. That's part of the reason we have so many orbitals, and we're making three more command centers, is for replacement purposes when bases die, but also for mules. It's all good. Whoa, blinking right in there. DT blink and stalker blink right on top of that army. Maru overextending a little bit. Showtime maybe smelling blood a teensy bit here. Pokes in once again. Moves out. Resources lost. 32,000 for Showtime. 24 for Maru. This is feeling very TVZ to me. Except the Terran isn't being the aggressive one. Man, the Vikings are just obliterating these carriers, aren't they? That is what they're built for. They're just happy to have some use. They're used against capital ships and, like, broodlords and stuff, obviously. Just don't see a ton of broodlords or battlecruisers or, you know, carriers against Terran, anyway. He knows where the army is, so he does go for a pretty solid snipe here. The planetary is standing in, getting some nice shots off. Taking down the orbital is a big deal. Very nice. Maru jumps into the bottom right and tries to take this base down, but we are DT blinking on top of this. Everybody gets EMP'd, though. The DTs are being revealed. The shield battery overcharge is here. Evacuation as we're still pushing in here. Showtime taking down additional orbitals. The bottom right base goes down to Maru's Marines and Marauders and Limitivax. But Showtime can afford to lose an income source a little bit better then, Sh um, then Maru can afford to lose an income source. 195 to 190 supply. Again, refusing to build observers. He's going to let this guy live. He's got three kills. He's a three kill widow mine. Yeah, Maru's like, all right, I got to go take down one of these newer sources of income of Showtime here. Maybe this right side base would be good, but the top left is Brand Brand spanking new. And killing that would hurt more. It represents more potential income, but Showtime... Sneaking up this left way to head him off. Trying to stay as well as he can outside of range of the sensor tower because he doesn't want to be detected here. But yeah, not coming back. Not expanding here. Not while this army is hanging around. Ah, oh, this group is going to die. Get out of there. Run. And then everybody pulls back. I would have liked to see this army pull in a bit. Maybe snipe off a few SCVs. Maybe take down an orbital in this location. But I understand. Kind of wanted to get out. This DT running for his life right now. Coming in again. Showtime. He's just being so patient. 
He's just... Oh, Disruptor Shots do not connect there as much as he wants it to. And EMPs are just instantaneous. Oh, EMPs are good units, man. I'm trying to pick off a few of those Vikings as they try to figure out how to kill the Colossus. Oh, it's trap. It's a trap this time. The DTs blink in, and by trap, I mean the Planetary Fortress dies. <laughs> I mean, but at least the DTs didn't get away this time. But man, that's another Planetary down. That's why Maru has been building command centers nonstop throughout this game. <laughs> For that very reason. I think that's a Disruptor hit on Ghosts. How many Ghosts are left? There's six Ghosts left, and 29 Ghosts have died. 13 Disruptors and four Carriers and two Colossus. Big ticket items going down for both players here. Pretty darn heavily. This has been a really nice PVT. Showtime is showing exceptionally well. And yeah, he's like, I'm just killing orbitals, man. You're spending resources on orbitals. I don't know if that's a good choice for you long term, because I'm going to keep killing them, and they cost money to build. Coming up the left side. Showtime trying to expand to the high risk vesting geyser base. That doesn't happen. Showtime is not going home. So, all right, I think he's just gonna allow this top left base to die. He needs to he needs to either recall after killing this base, or he needs to get those probes out of there. Maybe recalling the probes out of there. Oh, just hides them. That's fine. Are we on, oh, are we on base race? Are we base racing everybody? I don't, I don't actually know. Dude, Maru doesn't have any income left. Maru does not have money right now. Has Showtime done this? Maru does not have an income. Army value is 159 to 127, but a lot of those are Vikings. We know that Vikings do pretty poorly against Zealot Stalker Disruptor. I mean, the Vikings, there may be too many Vikings here. Nine Vikings for the one Colossus that exists right now. That is kind of dead army value. Liberators are playing it very well, though. Showtime re-expanding bottom right. Maru says, no, you're not. And that's a cancel. 300 mineral refund. Thank you very much. Showtime rebuilding top left. Where did those probes go? They're hiding. They're long distance mining right now because there's not really much else to, for them to do. Same thing here, actually, for Maru. Long distance mining, but there's DTs. There's DTs over here. Dude, Showtime using the DTs. In such good effect in this matchup. Absolutely sick. That Liberator count, though. That's what I should have been looking at. There are seven Liberators here. And this Rich Vespian Geyser base is dead again. Dude, this... I, I think this is getting an epic tag. We have gotten to the 28-minute mark in this match. How many bases have died today? Four Nexuses, five Planetaries, three Orbitals, and two Command Centers have died today. Both players losing a ton of workers. 47 probes and 62 SCVs. Just a bloodbath on both sides, making some Tempests. I don't know about Tempest to deal with the Liberators, man. Tempest can get picked off by these Vikings pretty easily, and Maru already has them. So, I mean, this game's not over, but Maru's income is struggling a bit. And has been for the past little while. DT blinks out of danger, which is something we see quite a bit. I think Showtime needs to poke somewhere. He needs to. He can't be roaming around defensively right now. I feel like his best bet is probably to try to attack down into this way. He knows what that is. He knows what that represents tomorrow as far as potential income and whatnot. Blinking in, just trying to get rid of those Liberators. Does get rid of a few of them, but catches Marine Marauder Fire and EMP is as a result. Dude, Maru. Maru's coming back here. I don't know that making Tempest was the right choice. Disruptors getting... Okay. Ah, great split. The Disruptor could have fired. Sometimes the fact that the Disruptor takes a minute to fire is really bad for Protoss here. Pull, pulling back to Shield Battery Overcharge. Pulling back to Tempests. And another base. Another Nexus is going to go down. I just... Yeah, man. Showtime, I think he needed to be on the aggressive side right here. Disruptor, okay, a Disruptor goes, or a Liberator goes down. Disruptor's going down, too. Probes evacuating for their lives. 12 more probes to die. The top left base going down here, too. Showtime has this one source of income. Maru has this one source of income. But there's a DT down here killing SCVs. Ah, the DTs have really kept Showtime in this game in situations where it felt like it was not possible for him to stay in this game. Liberator's getting shots off. Okay, Liberator's maybe overextending a bit here. 
Getting shots off on those Tempests, but like, ow. Yeah, ow. You don't do very well against Tempests. Your anti-air is splash-oriented, dude. I cannot believe how good these DTs are doing. 24 SCVs have died. Mars down to 15 total workers, but he does, on the other hand, have a lot of orbital commands, and by that I mean six. So mules are going to be good here. Showtime's army value is at 82. Maru's is at 95. Holy smokes, this is an insane game. I guess I should have mentioned this is a Patreon cast. <laughs> For those of you supporting me at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for at least a dollar a month. You get to see this the week of like December the 5th or something. So if you're watching this the first week of December 2021, thanks for being a supporter of mine at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. Really do appreciate it. And if you're watching this in, I don't know, like January or something, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here five times a week. Ah, the Zealot group getting wiped out. I don't know. It feels like Showtime had this game in hand. But man, they are both very low. Hey, look, remember that nuke we were talking about earlier that maybe we were worried Mar was never going to set off? At least not, because he canceled it. 11 SCVs die. Mar was down to 12. We're at 117 to 127 supply at 31 minutes. This is definitely an epic PVT. Showtime! The foreigner Protoss! The best foreigner Protoss! Looking very strong and very much hanging with Maru here. Do I really have a feel on who's going to win this game? No, not at all. Dude, that's a lot of dead probes on that transfer, though. Orbitals getting obliterated everywhere. Remember how I said there were six orbitals? There are four now. These Tempests need to be attacking something. Like, they can't just hang out like this. Missile turrets getting some fire up there. Showtime's army fairly low on splash damage. And that is a lot of what Maru has here. So disruptors are zoning out. Maru splits against them and then goes for it. Okay, disruptor hit up north. EMP is connecting as well. Nice disruptor hit there too. But chasing, 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 chasing. Maru feels like he's got Showtime on the ropes. And he's doing very well against the Stalkers and the Tempests. And I think that's it. I think Maru's counterattack is just obliterating Showtime's army value. The Tempests are all gone. A few Stalkers retreat. There's a Disruptor here, but no GG. GG Maru <laughs> wins it in 32 minutes and 48 seconds. An absolutely insanely good back and forth game. Maru had 61 supply at the end of that game. 61. It was 19 Marines and 6 Marauders and 6 Medivacs. That's it. And he wins it. When the I mean, the income graph. Nobody has any income happening right now. There's long... I guess he just landed this orbital for the eighth time. I mean, there's nothing happening here from Showtime. This is mined out, too. He knew. He knew. Yeah, I think... I really think the Tempest were a bad idea. I know he felt like he needed a way to handle the Liberators. And I totally understand that compulsion. But the number of times since the Liberators been introduced... In StarCraft 2, right? The number of times we've seen uh, Liberators used against Protoss and Protoss successfully using Tempest against them is not very high. The answer, it really traditionally just needs to be Stalkers. And I know <laughs> Maro's doing a great job not allowing that to happen. And the Viking count was so good too because the Vikings really did a great job getting rid of the carriers that Showtime really wanted to use today. And even the Colossus were greatly limited by those Vikings. So Vikings possibly MVP of this match for Maru ended up what? He lost a bunch of them, 14 of them. He had none left at the end of the game, so they did their job, and then they died. But 71,000 resource loss for Showtime and 58 for Maru. 104 SCVs died, 6 orbitals, 5 planetaries, and 2 command centers died for Maru today. And he won. Terran is never dead until they're dead. They are la, la, la cucaracha. The cockroach, man.
So hard to kill. Mario, just playing. <sighs> just playing so, so, so well. I mean, that's Maru, though. At his best, he seems unstoppable. And you know, maybe he is. Maybe when Maru's at his best, he's unstoppable. Love to see him win a world championship, though. Maybe he can. Maybe he can for 2021. We'll have to see. But that was awesome. That was a great Patreon match. Again, thank you so much for watching. That is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Dream Hack Masters Winter Match. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. And you can catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.